In this tutorial, we are going to evaluate the integral of x squared plus y squared dx minus 2xy dy along the closed curve C, where C is uh, on the semicircle in the third and uh, fourth quadrant. So the semicircle that we are having is a radius of uh, 2 and it's uh, centered at the origin. So we have uh, that uh, semicircle there and it's defined by x squared plus y squared is equals to 4. So we have uh, that curve. It is convenient to split that curve into two parts C1 and uh, C2. So the first part C1, I'll call the one which is uh, horizontal there. And that will be the C1. And uh, the C2 is uh, that part there, which is uh, flicking. The one that is defined by x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. So when we have uh, split the curve into two parts, uh, the line integral along the closed curve C will become the integral along the curve C1 plus the integral along the curve C2 of x squared plus y squared dx minus 2xy and dy. So we add uh, those uh, two integrals along C1 and C2 to get uh, the integral along the closed path C. Now let us move on to evaluate the integral along the curve C1. What we see is along C1, we are moving in the counterclockwise direction as indicated on the line integral there. We are seeing that our y is 0, and therefore our dy will be a 0, and we see that our x is um, varying from 2 to minus 2. So for the integral along C1 of x squared plus y squared dx minus 2xy dy, if we substitute uh, those values of uh, dy equals to 0 and y equals to 0, and put in the limits from 2 to minus 2, we get the integral from 2 to minus 2 of x squared plus 0 squared dx minus 2x times 0 times 0. And uh, that will simplify to the integral from 2 to minus 2 of x squared with respect to x. And the integral of x squared there is uh, x cubed over 3. And when you put in the limits, we get a uh, minus 16 over 3. So what you are having there is the integral along the curve C1 of x squared plus y squared dx minus 2x dy is minus 16 over 3. We now move on to evaluating the integral along the curve C2. But along C2, what we see there is uh, that C2 is defined by the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. When we have uh, equations of that form, it is convenient to use uh, polar coordinates. And uh, for us to use polar coordinates there, we see that uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to 4 is the equation of a circle centered at the origin. And uh, we'll see that uh, our radius will be the r squared. So when you compare those two, we see that our r is equal to 2. So the radius there is a 2. And we now write our x is equals to r cosine theta. But we are saying that our r is 2. And therefore, we have x is equals to 2 cosine theta. And our, our y is uh, r sine theta. And we are saying our r is 2. And therefore, we have y is equals to 2 sine theta. We can uh, differentiate x with respect to theta. And we get the derivative of x with respect to theta is equals to minus 2 sine theta. And the derivative of y with respect to theta is equals to 2 cosine theta. So from uh, those uh, derivatives, we can obtain our dx and our dy because we will need to substitute the values of our dx there and dy in uh, the line integral that we are given, replacing it uh, with the terms where we have uh, d theta and uh, theta. So from uh, that equation there, we would have our dx will be equals to minus 2 sine theta d theta. And for dy, it will be 2 cosine theta and d theta. So we have our dx and our dy. But what we now need to look at is uh, for the limits. Because uh, the limits now, what is varying is uh, the theta 
the theta we measure it from uh, the positive uh, x-axis uh, in the counterclockwise direction. So what we'll be having when we are measuring theta, we start at the positive there, we have a zero, and then we go one revolution up to two pi there. But now comparing with uh, the semicircle that we are given, at uh, the minus two there, what we are seeing is uh, theta will be a pi. So we have a theta is equal to pi. And on the other part there, where we are ending the semicircle there, we are having theta is equal to 2 pi. So what we are having there is that theta is varying between pi and 2 pi. So that will be our limit so far integration. So if we look at our integral, the integral of x squared plus y squared dx minus 2xy dy along the curve C2. Now we have to substitute what we have there, the part that I've highlighted, the x, the dx, the y, the dy, and then our limits of integration from pi to 2 pi. So we substitute those into that line integral, and what we get is uh, on the integral from pi to 2 pi of 2 cosine theta squared plus 2 sine theta squared multiplied by minus 2 sine theta d theta minus 2 times 2 cosine theta times 2 sine theta times 2 cosine theta d theta. And uh, that expression, we can simplify it to the integral from pi to 2 pi of uh, minus 8 cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta times sine theta of the theta minus 16 cosine squared theta sine theta at the theta. But if we look at uh, that part, the cosine squared theta plus uh, sine squared theta, using trigger identities, that part there is equals to 1. So we can simplify our integral to the integral from pi to 2 pi of minus 8 sine theta d the theta minus 16 cosine squared theta sine theta d the theta. So we now have uh, that integral. The first part is uh, not that difficult to integrate. It's a bit straightforward. But for the second part there, the one that I've highlighted, 16 cosine squared theta sine theta d theta. To integrate that part, it is better to use a substitution. And uh, the substitution that we can use there is uh, u is equals to cosine theta. And if we differentiate the u there, we'll get uh, the derivative of u with respect to theta is equals to minus sine theta. And we can make d theta the subject of the formula, and we have d theta is equals to du divided by minus sine theta. Now for the integral of uh, minus 16 cosine squared theta sine theta d theta. If we substitute where we have cosine theta, we put uh, the u, so it will be u squared. And for the part where we have sine theta times d theta, we have said d theta is du divided by minus sine theta. So that part will remain with a uh, minus du. But that minus sign multiplied by the minus sign outside that integral will give you a positive. So that integral will become 16 integral of u squared du. And uh, for the integral of uh, u squared, it's a uh, u cubed over 3. So therefore, uh, that integral is 16 u cubed and divided by 3. But we had used the substitution u is equals to cosine theta. So to put it back in terms of cosine theta, we would have that is a 16 cosine cubed theta divided by 3. So that's how the integral of the highlighted part there. So now going back to our integral, for the first part there, it will be 8 cosine theta. And we put the limits beside this from pi to 2 pi. And for the second part there, we say the result is 16 cosine cubed theta divided by 3, and to put the limits from pi to 2 pi. At this stage, what we now need to do is uh, to put in those limits, pi to 2 pi. So for the first part, 8 cosine theta, 
and when you put the limit pi to 2 pi, we get a 16. And uh, 16 cosine cubed theta divided by 3. When you put the limit, we get uh, 32 divided by 3. So that integral along the curve C2 is 16 plus 32 divided by 3. 16 plus 32 divided by 3, it uh, gives us um, 80 over 3. So what you are having there is the integral along the curve C2 of uh, x squared plus y squared dx minus 2xy dy is uh, 80 over 3. Now for the integral along the closed curve, we have to combine those, the minus 16 over 3 and the 80 over 3. So the integral along the closed curve would be minus 16 over 3 plus 80 over 3. And then we can uh, go on and uh, simplify that. Minus 16 over 3 plus 80 over 3, it gives us 80 minus 16 over 3, which gives us a uh, 64 over 3. So what you are having is that the integral along the closed curve C of x squared plus y squared dx minus 2xy dy is 64 over 3.